We're not different for the sake of being different. We don't, we don't go along with the world. We make our stand against the world and evil the wickedness in the world. We don't go against the flow, but we go with Jesus. Satan never, we don't go with the flow. We don't go against the flow. We go with Jesus. There's no reason to try to be different for the sake of being different. We are different for the sake of Jesus. Because we follow Jesus and then obviously we are different as we remain in him. Jesus said, remain in me and I will remain in you. And when Jesus remains in us, we're completely the opposite than the world is. Amen? We've got different standards. We, 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 we speak in another way. We got the viewpoint, the Bible is our viewpoint, not the world anymore. The Bible becomes our viewpoint, the Bible becomes our opinion, the Bible becomes everything that we believe in, and therefore we become far different than the world. So the world doesn't like us that anymore because we become strange unto the world. And therefore the Bible says, we are strangers in this world. Are you a stranger in the world? If you're not a stranger in the world, that means you like, then like the world. Because you are different, because you follow Jesus, and you follow his example, and you live out his words. Therefore, you are different, and you are strange to the people in the world. They find you funny. They find you strange. They find you completely different. And now when you get near to them, the Bible says we've got an aroma from heaven. That is a smell of judgment to the people in the world. But for those who seek the Lord, it's a sweet-smelling aroma, a, s- a smell of judgment to the people who love the flesh and love the ways of the world, but a sweet-smelling, s- s- sweet-smelling aroma to those who seek the Lord and those who want to be saved. Amen. Amen. The many people want to be saved. They come and investigate, and um, they f- start to follow Jesus. Others just come to investigate. And then they go, go, go away again. We're not of such. We want to submit to Jesus. We are strangers in the world. Give God a hand to say to the guy to, I'm a stranger in this world. You become strange to your family members. You become strange to your ex-friends. You become strange to, um, to people of the world because they think differently than you think. Because now you've got the mind of Jesus. How a man thinks in his heart, so he is. So now you've got a new way of thinking. You've got two natures. When you get saved, you're so excited about your new nature. You don't believe you've got another nature. You become so excited about your new nature. It's all about Jesus. And um, I can call that the honeymoon time. That After five, seven years, the devil come with his old tricks again and he tried to get you back into Egypt. Remember, Egypt is a form of the world. Okay, when the Bible speaks about Egypt, Egypt is the world. Okay, and that's why God, the Jews went to Egypt for help, for food, for prosperity's sake, because it was very dry in those days, and they had to come out again. I mean, sometimes we need the world. We rub shoulders with the world, and we make money in the world. We do business in the world. So, say to God, next to, we do business in Egypt. We rub shoulders with Egypt. We're in the world, but we're not part of the world. Sometimes we need to go to the world to make money, to do business. But we never become a part of the world. And the problem with the Jews was they wanted to stay now in Egypt. Jacob and his sons went down to Egypt because Joseph prepared a way. God used him to prepare a way for them to survive in Egypt. But they wanted to stay there. And God didn't want them to stay there. And the result of them staying there was that they became slaves. Wherever you go to a place where God didn't mean for you to stay forever, you become a slave there eventually. So you should always listen to what God is saying to you. And you need to go back where you belong to the promises of God. Amen. So in a time of trouble and time of need, Temporary, you can go to the world to do business, to get help, etc., etc., to survive. But then you need to go back to your original purpose. So the Jews had to go back to the original purpose, which was Canaan. In the meantime, 
many other people possessed the land of Canaan. And they had to be driven out again by the Jews because God has a plan in that small country. It's a very small country. It can fit in the Kruger National Park. Israel can fit in the Kruger National Park. But that was the country where God will cause the Messiah to be born. And that's the country he promised to Abram and said to him, his descendants will be great. And in his seed, the nations will be blessed. And the Messiah got born in Israel, the beloved country, the land of milk and honey. Amen. And um, so God took them back there. But he had to take them through the desert to get all the Egypt out of them again. That's so strange. Now, many of the Old Testament laws um, that we don't live by anymore, but we live by them. We don't live by them, but we live by them. It sounds funny. I'm not double-minded. Jesus said, I didn't come to do away with the law, but to fulfill the law. For example, I spoke about that yesterday to someone. In the Old Testament, the Jews were not allowed to shave their beards whatsoever. Why? They were not allowed to shave their hair short, short, like military style. Why not? Because then they looked like the people in Egypt. It was the people in Egypt who were very, very neat that shaved their hair very neatly and shaved their beards very neatly. That was the people in the world, the Egypt. And Egypt was not a godly place whatsoever. They had many funny gods and Pharaoh was considered a god as well. So it's, not a, it's not a holy place. Not a holy place. So the, 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 the Jews were given a command that they should not cut their hair here on the sides. Because otherwise they will look like the Egyptians. And therefore the Bible doesn't say to us, we should not look like the world. But more so in the New Testament concerning our behavior. I mean, in the Old Testament it says a woman should not wear at all the clothing of a man. I mean, you would not see in Old Testament a woman will wear pants, nothing. Even in the olden days, the old religious people. I mean, because they were not supposed to look like the people in the world, the people in Egypt. Because Egypt was a type, there's always a type in the Bible, a type of the world. And Pharaoh was a type of Satan. It was a man, but type of Satan. And as the Antichrist will be a man, but Satan will enter him. And there's already many Antichrists. Don't follow the example. Amen. Amen. So Egypt is a type of the world. And the Bible says, he who loved the world and the things in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the boastful pride of life. Those who got these things in their lives, the love of the Father is not in them. Amen. So we are in the world, but we're not part of the world. The world is now not a physical place, but it's the systems. So Egypt in the Old Testament, and even today, but in the Old Testament specifically, was a type of the world. We Satan is the God of this world. We know that Pharaoh, Pharaoh was a type of Satan. He was a man, but he was considered a God. So he was a type of Antichrist, a type of Satan. And Satan is the God of this world, and Pharaoh was the God of Egypt. He was literally the God of Egypt. They didn't consider him a human being. They considered this man a God. Okay? So, Satan is the God of this world. All the systems that you see around you, the money system and all the systems, Satan is the king of that. But we find sometimes a need, refuge in the world concerning business, finances, etc., etc. But we should not camp in the world. That was the problem with the Jews. They wanted to make Egypt their home. But they, well, they were supposed only to go there in the time where God provided through Joseph the plan to accumulate a lot of food in seven good years so that in the seven years that was a, a famine, the people could survive, the human race could survive. Now why in Egypt? Because Egypt was very able. You cannot overlook that. It was the world. You look today at America, very, very able country. But it's Egypt. Donald Trump tried to make it a godly place, but I tell you, it's far from that yet. Because there's so many evil people in that place. Okay? But it's a very able country. 
The same with Egypt in the olden days. It was a wicked country, but an extremely able country, meaning concerning material blessing, producing food. The Nile River was there. In the Nile River, it's an amazing river. It's an amazing river. You get huge fish, fish there, with which we got now in the river here. We're going to put them in Nile, the Nile tilapia. And it, a lot of food could, could be produced next to the Nile River. So the Nile River and Egypt was a place that really produced a lot of things that people needed in their lives. So Abram went down there with his wife to get food. Jacob and his sons went down there as, as um, Joseph made a way for them, or God through Joseph, after they sold him there. But the problem was they wanted to camp there because it's a nice place. And that's the problem with us Christians. We want to go to nice places then when we want to stay there. You, you're making a huge mistake because if you stay there too long, you're going to become a slave in the place God had meant for you to stay. And many people make that mistake. You might, you might like, you look like a great, great spiritual giant when you get there. But you're not going to be that forever. Joseph was the spiritual man who produced a plan to Egypt. Or God produced a plan to Egypt through the man Joseph. But Joseph's descendants overstayed their time. And Egypt became a snare unto them. They became slaves there. In Africa, South Africa is like the Egypt. All the other nations of Africa want to run to South Africa. If they ever stay their time in South Africa, they will become slaves here. They run here to South Africa because the economy is the last place in, Af in Africa where the economy is strong. Where there's a lot of food and a lot of prosperity. And they come here from Zimbabwe, they come from Zambia, they come from the Congo, they come from everywhere. And there's spiritual giants that come from the Congo and settle themselves in South Africa. But if they're going to stay here, their descendants will become slaves here and will be persecuted here like recently happened with the xenophobia, they call it, the Nigerians and the guys got kicked out and persecuted severely. That's the way things are. Never, never go settle in a place. Never settle in the world. I mean, go back to the place where God has meant for you to be after you got refreshed, after you survived. I mean. I don't hear no amen, but you don't have to say amen. You don't have to say amen. You really don't have to because I preach to you the word of God, which is very prophetically. Amen. Amen. They had to leave Egypt again, where they were snared and trapped and became slaves. And then God had to take them through the desert to take all the Egypt out of them. Amen. Let me tell you, the people that flee from Syria to Europe and the USA, they will have to go back because they will become slaves later on in Europe and in the USA. They will not find happiness there. Because they go there, people, the, the uh, globalist people want to mix all the nations. Because they plan one nation, one language, one money system, under one king that will say is God the Antichrist. So it's not God's will. As God has confused them at the tower of Babel, Babel, at the tower, as God confused their language, he will confuse them again and send them all back to their places of origin. Funny. That's what will happen. I knew it a long time ago, but I didn't understand it and I was wondering about it. But I knew it's going to happen. All the Jews are going back to Israel. With all these skills that they picked up in the USA, Europe, South Africa, and many other countries. So you can imagine what a prosperous place Israel is, is becoming and will be in the future. It can be an amazing place. The Syrians will go back to Syria, etc., etc., etc. And you need to make sure that you're always in the will of God. That's the secret. 
You need to be in step with the Holy Spirit and be guided by the Spirit always. Never, never, never let comfort direct your next step. Many, many people of Africa run out to the USA. Oh, they run there. Illegal and illegal. They run there. They run there. Because of comfort, prosperity, financial breakthrough, ta, 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 ta. it's a great place. They run there, but many of them will have to come back because many run there, especially politicians, with corrupt, stolen money and buy themselves big houses, especially in Florida. But they will have to come back to Africa to give an account of the money that they stole here. You see, the people that steal money think they're going to get away with that. They will never get away with it. Later on, they will have to answer. They will have to give an account. Today, there's a lot of Africans that go to the USA. Lots and lots. I see them on Facebook. Yeah. Because that is now, at this point of time, the Egypt. They run there because money is not abundant in Africa at this point of time. And that's okay if they go there for a time to get strengthened and maybe to do good business, yes. But then they need to take the business and bring that back to Africa. If they're going to settle there, they will become slaves. And the slaves, I don't speak like in the olden days, like a slave in the olden days. They will become spiritual slaves and they will not be treated well there. Eventually. So never, never Run to a place because of comfort. Or stay in a place. You can run to a place because of comfort, but don't stay in that place for comfort's sake. You need to be where God wants you to be. Amen. Many people from Zimbabwe came here because of food reason, Just plain straight food. I mean, that's good. But many of them will have to go back later to the place where God wants them to be. That's the secret. You need to be in the place where God wants you to be. I know that I know that I know. Me, this pastor, is in the place where God wants me to be. And no one will move me. No Egyptian will move me. Because I'm in God's perfect will. Amen. But not everyone can say that. I know the, the road my ancestors have, have traveled. And I know they've always been persecuted because they were Christians. They've been persecuted, number one, in Israel. They had to flee Israel. And they went to Italy. Then they got persecuted in Italy. And they had to run for their lives. They went over to France. And then after a couple of years of prosperity, same with Italy, they had to flee France again because of persecution. Because they've been Christians and the Roman Catholics persecuted them. Then they were running to South Africa now, to the Cape. Then they got persecuted in the Cape and they had to flee the Cape. Then they went to Natal and they got persecuted in Natal. And then they fled to the Free State. So actually, my, my, my ancestors is from the Free State recently. And I know I am today in God's perfect world, preaching the gospel of Jesus to the people of God and telling people about Jesus. If I would stay in step, keep on telling people about Jesus and doing God's will, I got a right to exist. When you do not do God's will anymore, and you're not in step with the Holy Spirit anymore, you do not have a right to be anywhere. Your right to exist. And any nation and any culture's right to exist is whether that person or that people group or that culture group is doing God's will for their life or not. Amen. If the Nigerian man finds himself in South Africa and Joburg because of money reasons, and he's not in God's will. He's not going to stay in Joburg forever. He's going to be persecuted. Xenophobia. 
they call it xenophobia. Because they will start to irritate the people of Joburg. And the people of Joburg will say, what are these Nigerians doing here? And these Ghananites doing here? They're stealing our jobs. And you see the bombs, and you see the fire, and you see the violence. Why does this happen? Satan going to never be angry at your persecutors or your oppressors. Be angry at your sin that allow your oppressor to oppress you. Amen? Amen. The Nigerians that get persecuted by the locals in Joburg should not be angry at the locals. They should be angry at their sin and their greed and their drug trafficking and all their sins, human trafficking that allow the locals in Joburg to overpower them and beat them up. Satan goes to stay in the will of God. That's the only place you will be safe. In your will of God, living by His word, and making sure that you are where God wants you to be. Amen. Then you will be safe as long as still your time to live. People might die. I do not know. Maybe I would wonder I do not die the natural death. Because if I need to die for Jesus, then I will glorify his name. Amen. To live as Christ and to die is gain. If you will die in the Lord, that's always good. Never die in your mistake. Never die in your sin. But die in the Lord. That's a good place to die. Give God a hand for dying in the Lord. To live as Christ, to die as gain. I pray today for you and I pray for myself that we will never die in our mistake, that we will never die in our sins, that we will never die because of our sin and never die in our sin, but that we will die in the Lord. And therefore the Bible says in Thessalonians, those who died in the Lord will raise, will be raised when Jesus comes back. Amen. Pray with me, Lord Jesus. Grant me grace that I will never die in my sin. That I will never die because of my sin. That I will never die in my mistakes. But I one day will die in you, Jesus. That's a safe place to be. Now, if you want to die in Jesus one day, that's our aim. You don't want to die another way. You want to die in the Lord. Amen? If you want to die in the Lord then you need to make sure that you live in Jesus, and Jesus said, remain in me, and I will remain in you. You remain in Jesus when you remain in his words. Hallelujah. And then you go to the places where God wants you to be. You always need to make sure. I, I remember I told you about the pastor that was here in Polokwane, a full gospel church, a great guy, and they called him to the sea, Jeffrey's Bay in the Cape, which is a very nice place, very, very nice place. And he went there, you know, without even praying, very sure that God called him to be there. But he picked up trouble when he got there because he was at the wrong place. God didn't want him there. God wanted him in Polokwane. So he picked up trouble with the church and the church board and everything. And eventually his wife died and he became severely sick. He was a wreck, man. Everything went wrong. Now it's not to say if everything goes wrong that you're not in the Lord's will. But in this case... Everything went wrong. Spiritually went wrong. Everything went wrong. And eventually he came back and realized. He came back to Polokwane. And he had to submit to other pastors. He was now an old man, devastated, wrecked, not in a, good, in a good shape. Because he didn't stay in step with God. Amen. And then he came back to Polokwane where God wanted him to be but not in a good state, messed up, wife died, etc., etc. Say to God, it's a good thing to stay in Jesus. It's a good thing to be in step with the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. 
Never camp in Egypt. Say to guys, you never camp in Egypt. If you need to go to Egypt, Egypt is a type of the world. If you need to go to the world to do business and to do certain things, it's good. But don't stay there. Always go back from the world to the place where God wants you to be. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God is a good God. Pray, Lord God of heaven. I want to always stay in you. Remain in your words. And your words remain in me. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So this is a spiritual life. Those who are led by the Spirit are the sons of God. They will know what God wants them to do. They will be in step with the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Wherever a Christian go, he prospers. Wherever he go and he do God's will, he will prosper. The Jews has been taken to Babylon, which is today Iran, in exile because of their sin, because of the disobedience towards God's word. And then God, the time that they've been there, God said they need to build houses, do business. Jews, Jews always do very good business. Wherever there's Jews, there's always good business. So the country that rejects Jews is very dumb. They always do very good business. So they went to Iran, been taken there in exile as slaves. And that's where Daniel was, Ezekiel was, all those guys was. Only Jeremiah remained in Jerusalem because he was the prophet who warned them that they should turn away from this sin, otherwise they would be taken into exile to Babylon, which is Iran. But then God said to the Jews there, all the Jews there, prosper, do business, build houses. So wherever you go, you should always do business and do very well. But you should make sure that you always go back to where God wants you to be in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God is good. Pray, Lord Jesus. I always want to be in your will. Let me never be out of your will. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God is good. In Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus said, Those who obey my commandments, that is a proof that we love God. Amen. Always be in step with the Spirit. Don't camp in Egypt because God will later on have to take you out miraculously and take you through desert to get the Egypt out of you so that you can defeat the enemy again. Who take, if, you, if you leave your promise behind, later on the enemy forces will come and they, they will try to overpower and take your blessing and take the place of blessing. Like the Jews, they had to go back now and face the enemies that took over the country that God promised to Abram, and Abram was physically there, and um, God promised the land, the whole land to Abram, it's quite bigger than it's now, and I believe, and I really believe, before Jesus comes back, before the end of the world, the Jews will get all of their land back as Israel, everything, because God promised it to Abram, and his descendants, Amen. Now, when you leave your, your certain position that God has given you, and you don't go back there for a long time, and then when God takes you back there, you'll find that other people have tried to take over your blessing. So don't stay away from your blessing too long. Not too long. You need to be where God wants you to be to protect the blessings He has granted you in His grace. Because if you go away from the place of blessing where God wants you, you'll find enemies there when you come back that try to push you out and try to take over your blessing. I don't like to go a long time away from this place. Because when I come back, I realize there's some enemies that want to steal my blessing. I can feel it. I can feel it. That's why I cannot go for a month on holiday. I love the sea and I love Sodwana and I love to go and dive and all these nice things. But I don't want to stay away. 
at the most two weeks, at the most. Because I realize I need to come back because there's enemy forces that always look where they can steal and take my blessing. There was a time I went a lot to TB Joshua, but I couldn't stay there for long because there was an urge. I got to go back. And when I came back, I realized, hey, the enemy tried to steal my blessing because this is a place I need to be. One time TB Joshua said to me, why are you so short here with me? You should stay longer. I said to him, no, sir. I've got responsibility here in South Africa. I need to run the church there. And he understood very well. He wanted me to be there. He invited me actually to stay there. But I didn't want to stay there because I knew here this was my Canaan. I had to be here. And every time I knew I just came back in time because Satan wanted to steal my blessing. Amen. Amen. It would have been nice to stay in Nigeria. It's better weather to begin with. It's a great place to be with TV Joshua. Great place. But it's not a place where I should be and stay. Amen. So I need to come back here. So never, never leave your place, your place of purpose for too long. Because you will come back and find enemies there. Canaanites, Hittites, and all the other tithes. Amen. Amen. Tsepu, you can go there to Brantford or wherever you were. Not too long, Tsepu. If you're too long, you find out you come back, there's enemies that try to take over your place. The Canaanites, the Hittites, and all the other tithes. Amen. <laughs> the Philistines and all these guys. Amen. Say to them, but don't stay away too long. Because if you want to go back then to the place of purpose, you'll find that enemies resist you, and you've got a big battle on your hand to get, try to push them out. Like when the Jews went back to Canaan, they had to defeat the people of Ai, Jericho, and all the other places. And eventually they did it as God commanded them. The only people they could not drive out, very interesting, it's a very interesting story, was the disciples, the descendants of the disciples of Melchizedek. Melchizedek was not a Jew. He was the high priest of God before the Jews exist. And Abram was the first Jew. And later on, David tried to cast out the descendants of the disciples of Melchizedek. And he could not. He could not. Even David could not cast them out. Because you see, when God made a promise, and when people are committed to God, like Melchizedek, was fully, totally, totally sold out to God, like no other man on the earth except Enoch. Those people, the descendants and the people connected to them, you will never, never defeat, never, never defeat, no matter who you are. Because Melchizedek was a greater man than Abram. He was a greater man, more committed to God than even Abram. Like Enoch. The more committed people are to God, the more difficult it would be to defeat their, them and their descendants. It's almost impossible. Like even David, the beloved man of God, could not cast away and cast out the descendants of the disciples of Melchizedek. And guess what life? Guess what life? They are still there. They are still a day in Israel. They will never be cast out. Amen. <laughs> God is good. Give him a great hand. Amen. That's the prophetic word that came to my heart. Amen. On Sunday, and even now, it's still on me. Amen. And I knew this all along, and I spoke to Paul and the guys about it, and I said, yeah, what is this and that and that and that and that? And as more I speak about it, the more I realize it's God that put these things in my heart. 
The globalists can do what they want to do. They will not mix the nations because God created the nations very uniquely with a specific purpose to serve one another so that it might better the whole human race. Amen. People need one another. I need you and you need me. Amen. People need one another. Amen. So today they try to mix the German race. They want to mix them with the Syrians and the Muslims for the sake of destroying um, uh, conservativeness and replace it with Islam. That was the reason why the globalist leaders, world leaders, caused this, the people who fled from ISIS, the Syrians, to Europe, so that Europe could, could be taken over by the Muslims. But it's not going to work, because we pray. Give God a hand. Amen. As the Muslims previously took over portions of Africa, but God work in amazing ways when we pray. I mean, Sudan was a mess. Today, the president of Sudan is a full-blown Christian. A great, great, great portion of Sudan was Muslim. Today, the president of Sudan is a fully Christian, full-blown. We reworked the Malawi among the Yao people. They became Muslims because they realized when the Muslims came to Malawi and in the north of Mozambique, the north of Mozambique and Malawi, they're going to take these guys as slaves. But they knew one thing they quickly picked up, the Africans quickly picked up. If they would become Muslims, the Muslims would not be able, according to the Quran, to take them as slaves. So to protect themselves, they became Muslims. And today, those areas are Muslim areas. Till recently, we worked there, and a lot of other Christians are working there, and the people that we train there is working there. So Muslim Islam get defeated by Jesus there. Give God a hand. Amen. Amen. Because Islam wants to take over the world. They've got a very wicked plan. A plan, a world plan, a strategy to take over the world, the whole world. But they're going to be defeated. And then the communist countries, China, Russia, got their own plan to take over the world. That taking over the whole world as a, as a, a lust for power that existed mean like with the Greek Empire. Alexander the Great took over the whole world. Before him, Iran, the king of Babylon, took over the whole world. And then the Roman Empire, Empire came and they take over the whole world. And then the British Empire came and they took over the whole world. That's a wicked lust for power in the human heart. God, God never meant for that to, to be like that. Never meant that the whole world should be taken over by one culture. So Muslims got their own, it's still going on. That's what, going, that's what COVID-19 is. COVID-19 is a wicked strategy from the Chinese and communists to take over the whole world. To subject the whole world to their rule. COVID-19 as a virus created in a lab. The virus was always there, but they took the virus and they manipulated this virus so it might attack humans. But Christians pray and it didn't work. Give God a hand. Amen. You see, all Christians are not dumb. And I know I, I hear prophetically. I know it. So I knew from the beginning God gave me that dream long ago, a couple of, couple of years ago, about the big, huge, reticulated python with the triangles on its body. You can go and look at that snake. It's got triangles. COVID-19 is a triangle. They use a, a manipulated virus, manipulated in a lab, 
to subject the human race to their control. And we can see with the lockdown how easy it is to control the human race. It's very easy. Very easy. And that was a test run for those people to see if they can control the human race and get the human race to do what they want them to do. And this lockdown destroyed economy and the world leaders saw that and they actually used that the wicked people. And they spoke about this economic problem that COVID-19 caused as a time of renewal in the economy, which is actually a time of disaster. But, say to guys too, we as Christians, we pray. So we will not allow the human race to be controlled again. Not by the Chinese. The Chinese want to be the boss. They want to rule the world. Economy, go and look. They want to rule the world. They infiltrated South America. They tried North America. They tried Greece. They tried many countries. They definitely is busy with Africa. They want to control the whole world. And that's what they did with the COVID-19. Virus, economy, politics. Triangle. China on top. They think they're on top, but they will not be on top. You see, the Muslims also thought they're on top, but they are going to be losers. They planned to take O over the whole world, but they already starting to fail. Now, the communists, they try to take over the whole world, the Chinese specifically, but you know, the Chinese doesn't like it, but they got the boss. The boss is Russia. And Russia is far stronger than China. But China doesn't want to know this. Even in their own, as a unity, as communist people, that got a plan how to take over the world, they cannot, they cannot but to admit that Russia is their boss. So the big boss in the world is Putin, the Russian president. But they will not take over the world. Why? I want to hear you. Because we as Christians, we pray. That's why these prophetic preachers like me, I'm one of the many. I'm only a small one of the many. Christians that preach prophetically, so that you might know what to pray for. So you should pray against world dominion. So that the world will not again, like with the Roman Empire, like with the Greek Empire, like with the British Empire, be controlled again by one people group. Satergani still let no one ever steal your liberty. Amen. You understand? Many times I preach against communi communism, and you might think that's why I explain myself. I'm busy with politics. I know what communism is. I'm not into politics. Communism will st will not allow you to worship God freely. That's my that's my number one problem with communism. My number one problem with them, they will not allow you to worship our God freely like we do. Because communism is a religion where the state becomes God. They don't want you to be loyal to God. They want you to be loyal to them. Amen. Pray, Lord Jesus. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You should never allow anyone to tell you what you may do and may not do. You are a free will. God has given you a free will. God doesn't even stop you from exercising your free will. Never allow people to do that on your behalf. Never. Amen. Pray with me, Lord Jesus Christ. You've given us a free spirit. You came to set us free. In the name of Jesus, we will never allow us to be controlled and to be robbed of a free will. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. That's what we pray against in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That's what the enemy planned, but the enemy is going to fail. This COVID-19 already failed, but I speak about another virus that's coming. How are we going to react towards the next virus? 
Well, basically, most, mo- mostly, it's a fake. It's a fake. Coronavirus mostly was a fake. It was blown up. And it didn't work the way the people, the Chinese planned for it to work. It didn't work that way. I mean, even though Donald Trump got it, but he's victorious because he's a Christian. Say to guys, because he's a Christian. Him and his wife got it. And that was China's aim, to bring the whole USA down under their control. Economy, politically, and physically. But I'm so glad that Donald Trump overcame. Uncle Angus Bacham also had it. He overcame. Give God a hand. Amen. Hallelujah. Sad to say many old people died in places like Italy. Sick people and old people. That's very, very sad. I don't want to get that. But Donald Trump got it and he survived. And he's fit and well. Amen. And if we got, we get it, we will survive. If you stay in Jesus. That is your place where you need to be. In his will, Jesus said, if you remain in me, I will remain in you. I will remain in you with my power and my protection, my blessing, and my guidance. Very important. Say his guidance in Jesus' name. No one wants to be out of, out, the, out of the will of God. We need to be in the will of God always. Listening to his voice in Jesus' name. Amen. Pray, Lord Jesus Christ. I want to be guided by your Holy Spirit. Always be in your perfect will. Doing what you want me to do. To be where you want me to be. In the name of Jesus Christ. And everyone shout, Amen. Amen. I tell you, God is good. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. God is good. This will be broadcast on the latest stage because of the power problem. They didn't tell us that there's going to be a power problem, but uh, it will be broadcast later. So the people who stream, they will see us later now. I bless them with wisdom and guidance that you will always be in God's will in the mighty name of Jesus. Never be out of his will in Jesus' name. We need to be where God wants us to be. We need to be doing what God wants us to do in Jesus' name. COVID-19, stop off. COVID-19 is also a spirit. That, over, that it's like a blanket being placed over the people to make them passive. Economy-wise, because Satan doesn't want us to prosper. Want to stop us from doing God's will. Close the borders so that we don't go to other countries to preach where God wants us to preach. But that's going to lift soon in Jesus' name. Amen. Soon in Jesus' name. Amen. I don't want that mask on your face anymore. Because I don't recognize some of you. I'm playing. I do recognize you. Pray, Lord Jesus, deliver us of of the spirit of COVID-19. The passive spirit that lay us lame. We reject that spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. And we say, whole COVID-19 thing, COVID-19 spirit, You leave our country, you leave us, you leave Polokwane, you leave South Africa, and you leave the world in the mighty name of Jesus. COVID-19 spirit, we break your power in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. To the Chinese Communist government, I'm going to say, you failed and you will always fail in Jesus' name. You will not be able to do what you wanted to do, and you will be exposed and you will be shamed. In Jesus' name. I don't speak to the Chinese people. I speak to the Chinese government. I mean, there's a lot of good people in China. But the government is extremely wicked. Persecuting Christians. So lock them up. And torture them to, to death many times. Evil, evil government. Organ harvesting in China. The pastors and the people that they arrest there, they, oh, they harvest their organs. And then... A person in a rich country, because China's into money big time. They want to control the world. They want to be the richest. So the rich people in the UK, the rich people in America, they need a kidney. You go to China. You go and get your kidney there. And they, you plan it before the time. 
And the person that will give his kidney to you is a person that do it against his will. He's a pastor that got arrested in China because he's a pastor. So they take out his kidney against his will. To give a certain rich man that need a kidney. In UK or wherever. That's how wicked, it, you know, wicked that system is. So I pray for the downfall of the Chinese government in Jesus' name. That the people in China will arise and overthrow them and completely. I pray the same for Russia. In Jesus' name. So those people in those countries will be free from those evil governments in Jesus' name. Organ harvesting. Very, very, very wicked. They arrest the pastors and other religions. They do not allow any other religion because they want full loyalty from the people. They don't want them to be loyal to God. They want them to be loyal to them. A small group of people that control the whole China. That's how wicked it is. Amen. Pray, Lord Jesus Christ. We throw off the yoke of COVID-19. We will not be bound by nothing. Remove that yoke from our country. In the name of Jesus. Remove that spirit from our midst. That lay us lame. Let us arise and shine. The whole of South Africa. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The good news is in the future, many of these evil governments will be overthrown by their own people. The governments that doesn't serve the people, but want to control the people, is going to be overthrown by the people. And that's good news. Give God a hand for that. Amen. All the countries, all the governments of countries that control the people instead of serving the people, and abuse and misuse the people. We're going to be overthrown by the people. We will, it will be God. And a new breed of leadership will arise. That serve the people. Amen. And amen. Thank you Jesus. Okay, say to God next to you. You should always stay in the will of God. Do what he wants you to do. Live the way he wants you to live. And move where he wants you to move. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. God is good. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray for you. Let's give our tithe and offering. Thank you, Tsipu. Hallelujah. Come quickly and get yourself a seat. Those who need prayer. Those who need prayer, come and sit where there's not a cross. I want to pray for you. Thank you. Yeah. In the front lines where there's light.
Those who stream with us, I bless you and I pray for your breakthrough. You'll always be in God's will, doing what God wants you to do and living the way you want you to live and be at the place where he wants you to be in Jesus' name. May you get your breakthrough and may you throw off the yoke of COVID-19 in Jesus' name. We break the yoke over the businesses in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for your family, for your children. Fight. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Tout le coup c'est quatre la caille ici. Comme ça, non? Mm. Jesus, thank you for your grace and your love, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. You, 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 you are where God wants you to be. You are. Jesus! Thank you, Lord, for a blessing in Jesus' name. for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. What is it? Hello, Sam. In the name of Jesus. Father, thank you that you restore him spiritually in the mighty name of Jesus in South Africa for safety. Safety in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. God bless you, friend. What's the color, sir? Mm. Can we on that? And he says, Thank you. He says, Sit you on the pickle. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Here is all for sin and alcohol observed. And he known for Jesus. And he says, No. Thank you. Here is all for good scribe. And he says, No. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Mm, come, yeah, fat him. And he says, no. Amen. Amen. Mm. Yes, open up the plan. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. I receive. Hmm? Okay. Let me hold my. Hmm.
ons bid daar teen, in die naam van Jesus, Heere, hierdie sky sake, Heere, ons kan sy leer dit in die naam van Jesus, in Jesus naam. We pray against the spirit of the woes, in Jesus name, in Polakwani, Amen. We pray for Larise, this headache will leave her, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you Jesus, this headache will leave her, in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus name, Amen Tepu. Thank you Jesus. Yes, Lord, we pray for grace for Giant and his wife, protection for them in the name of Jesus, protection on the road for them, in Jesus' name. Amen. You can mind, stand up, please. A plan, a plan. Yeah, God give you a plan. In the mighty name of Jesus. Purity. In Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hmm? Mm Sy moet leer, jy moet dit doen, ok? Ok, staan op. Amen, jy moet geld vraag vir jou goed, as ok. Want dan moet kos op jou tafel wees. Amen! Alles wat jy vraag sal gebeur, amen. Halleluja! That the people who stream, they're going to light a stream. God bless you in Jesus' name. You will be where God wants you to be. You'll do what God wants you to do. And you will live the way that God wants you to live in Jesus' name. I bless the people who will look on, 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 on the, the, this um, streaming in Jesus' name. I bless you. And I pray that you will find God's will for your life. That you will not go stay in Egypt. You'll go and visit Egypt, but you will not stay in Egypt. You will do God's will and you will go back to your promises in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Thank you. God's good. Stand to your feet. You're going to have a good rest of the week in Jesus' name. Amen. Say to your neighbor, your blessing is in your hand. The word of God is in your heart. In your mouth. Believe and it will be to you according to your faith. I bless you in Jesus' name and release you. Into his fire. In Jesus name. Say to never May the fire of God. Burn against all your sins. Destroy your sin. Burn it like chaff. May, may, may God be gracious to you. May God's mercy be on you. But may God's fire destroy your sin. In Jesus name. What sin do I speak? Any sin, every sin. Your failure, your inferiorities, your shame, your sin, everything that's not of God in your life. May the fire of God destroy that in Jesus' name. No mercy on your sin, but mercy on you in Jesus' name. Satan, never mercy on you 
May God's gra- God be gracious to you. But not on your sins, your weaknesses and your mistakes. May God burn it with unquenchable fire. Okay, say to your neighbor, because your God is a consuming fire. In Jesus' name. And this ministry, I don't want any sin anymore. Nothing. Nothing, not, not, not in you and not in your children's life. God's fire must fall. In Jesus' name. Must fall and burn away all the chaff so that only the wheat might remain. And God can put it in his barn for use when he wants to use you. Say, I'm done with sin. Pray, Lord God of heaven, me and my family members, my children, let your fire fall on our sin. The wrongs that we do, the mistakes that we make, in the name of Jesus, fire on all our sins. Unquenchable fire. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you are gracious to us. Thank you for your mercy. But thank you that your fire will burn everything away in our lives. What's not of you? In Jesus' name, we submit to your fire. Let your fire fall. Let your fire burn. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, say to never, I release you into God's fire. God bless you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So fire on your impatience. Amen. Amen. Fire on all rudeness. Fight fire on all fighting. When you look at your husband and you uh, fire on that. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. I release you into God's fire. Be blessed. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you. Take. Look here. Take. Take. Hallelujah. Take. What? Sharon, fat. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. God's good. You are released into God's fire. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hello, my skin. 